So this is uh, products for organizing at the uh, Serpentine Sackler Gallery. What I have here is a kind of a look at the history of organizing around technology. So part one of the exhibition, which is kind of subtitled Products for Emergent Organizations, is kind of a short history of hackers and hacking spaces and the way people organize in a grassroots way around technology. So it's taking each kind of special moment in the history of hacking, starting right back in the 1940s and 50s at MIT, and running right up to the contemporary moment, and looking at moments when uh, people have come together naturally around technology to try and figure out what works with technology in a really emergent way. Here on this side of the room, in the kind of second part of the exhibition, products for formalized organizations, you get kind of a look into a couple of management strategies, Agile being one of them, and uh, Holacracy being another, which uh, enable this type of emergent space to exist within larger, much more formalized organizations like the GCHQ or Zappos or even Apple. I think one important way this group of artworks comes together for me sculpturally is uh, the way of dividing up the architectural space of the exhibition. So on the one hand, you're looking at architectural models like this from the outside. The managerial structures that I try and pull out of the formalized organizations are always in this kind of architectural, top-down, bird's-eye view kind of uh, interaction with the work. On the other side, on the hacker narrative side of the space, you're really in an emergent structure. So I have a kind of scaffold that sort of pulls the building up and around the artwork. I've started with the hardware where you store uh, server racks, kind of larger data farms, and I've turned them into kind of display units with lights and text and highlighted pieces of hardware from the history of hacking. In the kind of um, formalized organizational side of the room, I've tried to look at the way architecture really reflects culture inside those organizations. And architects and office designers and programmers and management strategists come together to try and create an environment which really reflects the values of an organization. And I've tried to kind of pull those apart and make them more legible in this side of the space through diagrams, through models, but also using the kind of visual language which is native to that space. So a kind of marker paint uh, style things, post-its and, and whiteboards and desks and chairs and the way that they're organized, they all kind of reflect the culture inside the organization. So the GCHQ, one of their kind of workspace hacks has been to use a um, alligator as a kind of symbol for uh, not putting down new ideas or not knocking new ideas when they come up. So when radical innovation erupts in the workplace, we want to be open to that innovation. And if somebody then criticizes a new idea right away, right off the bat, you throw this kind of teddy bear alligator to them and remind them to uh, tame the alligator. And that's a workspace hack that works in the GCHQ very well to keep new ideas flowing. That also works in Zappos, a very different kind of company where a llama is used, a kind of cuddly toy llama is used to like, keep people open, happy, and contributing. One thing that has been recently built into the hacker narrative, let's say, and a station in my hacker story on the one side of this exhibition is the hackathon where large organizations will open up their code and let young developers and designers come in for an intense kind of workspace innovation session where they'll kind of make new products and new hacks into the code of the already existing organization. And this is taking the spirit of hacking and kind of making it re-energize large organizations. Again, another favorite stop in our uh, hacker narrative is uh, where hackers go legitimate. So there's been different moments in the hacker history. Sometimes it's been inside the law, sometimes it's been outside of the law. But one great moment in the late 90s is when the hacker space loft opened up to the US Senate and uh, looked at how there were vulnerabilities in the US uh, government's uh, security system that they found as innovator hacker groups. And there's an amazing video that I've included in this hack legitimacy rack, which I have here, where we have the hackers from Loft talking about and showing the US Senate exactly those same problems. 
The GCHQ building clearly is an icon which has come to not only stand in for radical connectivity but also defence in the last few years. But this kind of meme of a round space, of a circular building, has been a powerful one across technology firms. This kind of circular symbology, that the connection, the idea of radiating out from a kind of central point, has become a kind of a sort of important theme for technologies and the way they make their spaces iconic.